So as you're doing that, um, Harry's <laughs> how you doing? Uh, Kicks, what are you doing? All right. Well, if I recall, my plan was to come here and speak to some people. I just need a gentle reminding of who those people were because uh, Bearcat's mentor told me a lot of information, some of it which I think is actually actionable. Well, uh, the people you could be talking to here would be people that look, you're looking for, you know, money, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but he also mentioned about uh, the... Uh, the triangulus and the yeah and the cult. Now, yeah, one of the things um, uh, he said was that he had he was investigating that and uh, that perhaps they were tied to uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, tied to uh, the the uh, the pomarch in some way, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and one of the curious things was that one of the things he was investigating that you told him about was why they were moving gold north, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if they could sell it anywhere else, I mean, they could, you know, just traffic the gold. It would probably traffic with the uh, Scarlet Brotherhood or somewhere else. But mm-hmm. why would they do that north? Why, why here? Why, especially going for Greyhawk, right? Uh, and the other thing is, um, actually, you know, you never met... Um, the guy that was hanging with uh, with Gar. So I, I maybe I briefly saw him, but yeah, he would not be in mind, I think. No. Instead I talked with other people. There was the young lady that mm-hmm. asked you to uh, investigate the uh, the games in the first place. Right. Following up with her might be an interesting angle. And if not that, then there's definitely people here. Uh, who would be interested in maybe the convincing argument of, I know of where I could intercept gold coming from our enemies, and if I have the money to raise my army a bit more, I could go do that, and then, of course, some money returns to you. It's so easy. It's an argument. So, that would probably be the two actionable things. Find former contact, convince people to fund a quick military campaign. Starting like in the spring or something. Oh, I gotta find adventure paths. Yeah, I gotta go searching for people now. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta find the thing. We're going to war. Uh, yeah, um, Age of Wolves. Age of Wolves. All these PDFs. All yep. the Yeah, her name was Celeste. C E L S T. She was apparently a young blonde human. Um, and she was the one that uh, actually, she was a half elf. And she was the one that uh, you need to contact. There was also another gentleman, I think, Barakat contacted from the Knights of uh, Luna. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the city as well. Uh, so that might be another person you may have contact. Perhaps yeah. more for the course of, I mean, he, he was, in fact, the one that hooked you up with the local elves. He might be of help as well. Okay. So we can start going down the list, I think. Yes. Yeah, his name was Darius. Okay. And he also was a half elf. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, who are you going to try to contact first? Um, hmm. Also, remember that you met people like the Captain General uh, yeah. and the, uh, the basically the, the assistant to the mayor, right? Mm-hmm. The, um, the, the major domo, I think. The yeah, major domo, Castilian, 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 yeah. Uh, so those are also uh, available. Right. Give them actionable intelligence that, hey, your adversaries is moving money into your territory and causing disasters. Did you know? <laughs> Castilian Jacob Stewart. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Mm. So while I've personally talked with Celeste, Duncan sounds like he might have more immediate things to actually give. So maybe I'll go hit him up first. Duncan? Uh, the, the night guy. Did I mess up that name? What was it? Darius, Darius. Darius, uh, okay. He did have a D. There you go. Going to uh, yeah. join the, uh, the Grey Wardens? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's put him in. Oh. Let's, yeah. let's see if Kick survives the Grey Wardens. He didn't last no, time. Oh, he did. <laughs> Darius um, uh, Malik. Talking of Darius Malik, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's jump over to Barakas. Wow, um, America, uh, you have a shadow. Everywhere the Barricade goes, she goes with you. She's not walking beside you. She literally is walking like four. And always with the death glare. Yeah. At least every time you look at her, she looks like she has a death glare. Okay. You might have caught her once or twice, like her face has softened up, looked at something else. And the moment she looks at you, it's like, mm. and she insists on calling you on your, uh, by your first name. Always in public, mm -hmm. she doesn't care. Yep, she she did. She was careful around kicks and everyone else, but here she doesn't seem that the rabble. She doesn't care whether or not uh, they, you know, they know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, but then you can do a uh, search. I keep. I don't know why I keep saying search. <sighs> A uh, perception. perception check. Okay. This is a perception check. Well, there you go. Yeah. You realize that you're also being followed. And in fact, when you're being followed, you realize who it is, and he smiles. And it is Darius. Oh. And sort of waves at you like, oh, long time, sir. Yes, a uh, long time indeed. Uh... How how has it been with the elves and such? Well, I basically do most of the deals here. I uh, heard a rumor that you were moving north, mostly because you didn't keep it secret, so it was no surprise. Uh, and and she bows, he bows to the lady, and who might the lady? And she kind of like sniffs the other, like, um, none of your concern. Duly noted. I have uh, to agree with her. Master Barakats, then, um, would you like to step into this convenient bar that we have right here? You realize that when you make the perception check, it wasn't so much that you're like, oh, I'm being followed. It's more like he wanted you to know that he was there. Okay. And the lady would like to join us. Of course, tea for both of you. I would not like you to break any of your religious taboos. Uh -huh. Right this way. Sure. I'll, um, I'll follow him. Definitely and, not set up at all. And you see, this is the uh, the broken cask, which is just one of many taverns in Greyhawk. If there are a dozen of gambling dens and there are hundreds of taverns, alehouses, wineries, etc., you know, people getting drunk here is it's a pastime. One could argue it's like the pastime. You know, the things that happen when you don't have a national sport active. Well, you know, you just almost destroyed the last national sport they had, and that happened yeah. in the summer. So, you, you, yeah, people are so traumatized about that. <laughs> uh, and so, you're so, like, oh, and you take a like a booth in the corner and say, like, Well, it might be so bold, sir. What brings you to the city? Well, um. A new acquaintance of ours has some business here, and uh, other than that, I guess I'm going to be performing soon. Congratulations. And this acquaintance of yours wouldn't be a, a missing scion of a defunct family. <laughs> and it starts. <laughs> Um, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Of course you don't. But were this to be a rumor that could be 
easily verified, then that means other people know about this room and are seeking to easily verify, as one does when one hears rumors of sure. dead science coming back to life. <laughs> right. Um, it's just the reason I made the character this way. It's just I the only reason. Suppose if that was who I was talking about, yeah. And you said you were going to perform. Yeah. The Grand Opera House. Apparently. And with the uh, great Ikram. Yeah. That... Mind you, my Ikram, the moment you guys came into the city, he just it's like, I need to do some other things. And he just disappeared. Oh, you know, right. Which is like, and he was like, uh, never mind. You know. Um, and where, where would he be, by the way? Do mm -hmm. you know? Uh, well, he's busy uh, organizing things for that. Mm -hmm. And may I dare ask of your lady companion, who seems to be staring dag daggers at us while we drink our tea and ale? And she, and you can only hear like a <laughs> coming from her side of the, the, the you know the three seats around the the, the table. Um, why exactly have you invited me here? I have to admit that I've been keeping eyes on you. Well, you little group. And um, I do have some actionable intelligence for your battle. But I prefer to give it to you versus give it to him. But while he seems to be a capable military commander, leader of men, uh, he seems a rather loud fellow. Quite. You know what I mean. Yes. Not to insult him, I think. I suppose you should, when you're in the battlefield, you have to shout to yeah. orders carried out, stuff like that. But in more polite company, might not go so well. You know. Yeah. And so you have actionable intelligence for him. Yes. It's about his neighbor yeah, to he... the west. Ah, uh, great. Yes. He is unhappy in the fact that uh, you share a border. In fact, as I understand, dude, their lands are at him. He hasn't yet, but I think he's actually coming here. Uh, before the new year to petition uh, the oligarchy to see these lands of him as being as he has prior claim to this to his father. Mm -hmm. um, and if he doesn't get away, well, he is a mind. I mean, he is a deity of evil war god. So, yes, yeah. Now, I would, if I were in the mind of making suggestions to barons, like I would suggest that this would be resolved politically for a uh, arm engagement, even one that leads to a relatively easy victory, would have him occupy far more land if he were to win, far more land that he may be able to administrate and stretch his resources to much. And were to lose, he could lose so badly as to lose everything. So it's what we like to call in this business a lose lose situation, at least for the time. Uh, but were you two, you know, you and certain someone who should know the city and the politics, uh, were to counsel him effectively, I think you could win this little scenario. Uh, perhaps a an even split, or some other imaginative arrangement, 
preclude him from winning outright, but also preclude him from trying to launch a military campaign. Because that's another thing. Were he to lose and it'd be a draw, both of you would be weakened. And when next year arrives, the orcs are looking for a place to attack. Well, yes. So, so I guess that makes it lose, lose, lose situation. Very. So we'd have to give him a win without actually letting him do anything. I also warn you that clerics of deities or well, the thing is war, so there's an aspect of him that's chomping at the bit, so to speak. Also, I've heard some rumors that he was trying to get some kind of arranged marriage that didn't fall th that fell through somehow. Yes, it did not go well. That's what I've heard. Yes. So yes, he's probably chomping at the bit to impale someone. For some random reason. All right. Did I mention also that his deity is mostly human supremacist deity as well? Hmm. That would not go well for the Baron, I imagine. No. You know, Iguana on his tickets not becoming of a dragon. I mean, I doubt he would. I mean, this little peasant would actually win anything. And, but when you started talking like that, you see that that she is like she went from staring daggers to be like, oh, this is fascinating. Like this is like wow, this is juicy. Like oh, okay, this is this is this is reminds her of back being back home, right? The court entry. Okay. She's like, okay, 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 okay. I'm falling. Don't mind me. I'm just listening. And she's a drama out. <laughs> yeah, she, apparently the popcorn skin, <laughs> popcorn stand, and everything. Yeah, <laughs> get that all ready. Right. Well, I don't think him winning anything would be good for anyone. Hmm. But like I said, also him losing mostly or feeling yes. would also be bad. In fact, and he takes out a sort of a roll of paper and basically a rough sketch of the area. And there's basically we're translated to the main map. Let's do a quick look at the main map to to tell you, remind the uh, our viewers and players of the three hexes that are overlapping. Right. So you know he is here, yep. and you are here. It's also overlap with password effect. Mostly it overlaps with Pasquarel. And Brace is here. Uh, so here and here are the two uh, hexagons that are shared. And that he's claiming as his territory. Ancestral territory. Uh, that also, if he were to claim them, would cut you off from most of the wood. Unless you have to go over here, which is along the wall. Yeah. And out technically outside of your territory, unless you span into the forest, and that may see a butt you with the elves, which already told you that thank you, but no thanks. Right, so what would make him feel like he's winning? I mean, I have territory. I am not a politician, mostly even diplomat. Uh, but um, well, anything, any elegant solution, I will give to you. All right. Um, well, <laughs> suppose we will have to formulate some kind of plan for this as well. Uh, he should be arriving, I think, within the week. So you have some time to prepare. Unless you're done with your business here and decide to go. All right. 
Well, um, thank you for uh, informing me of these developments. Now, uh, 180, <laughs> my lord, if you excuse me, I have business to attend. Of course. And I think you two have something to talk about. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> Could even. And he says, in, in, and he says, uh, in in clear uh, but clear, slightly elven accent, "May Allah Akbar bless your path." All right. Well, I guess that's something to deal with later. And she turns to you and she says, "In a way, so none of your companions know who you really are." Today. Well, um, no. And that's the reason why you walked away from me because I found out. Who... It was not my decision. Oh, it was what? Not telling me or running away? I was not given a choice in the matter of whether we left or stayed. By who? Or who? Well, the leader of the household, who knew of everything for the most part, and who deemed it unsafe. Yet I wasn't informed. Apparently, I would not understand. It seems. Your betrothed. The woman that you were going to spend the rest of your life with. Have children with. You know, a life. Yeah. Telling me was unimportant. I wanted to. I really wanted to tell you. You know, but... you could have slid me a note or something. And that would have been helpful. Yeah. So now you're a thousand miles away. In a foreign land. Serving a... What is he? What is it, exactly? I didn't uh, want to... believe they're called Dragonborn. Dragon what? Dragonborn. Uh, I am not really sure if it's descended of dragons, or created by dragons, or The anything. majestically powerful creatures that breed fire, lightning... Have yes, you destroy those... entire entire town to city in a single night? Those creatures. Yeah, but he is and not. They haven't, but they haven't cut his head off and put it in a pike because, in fact, made him a baron. Because, I mean, I understand these are foreign. Land. And by the way, she this whole conversation is by Clunish. She, she, yes, the yes. moment he left, uh, she switched yeah, yeah. languages. Um, well, and... uh, he did commit a. <laughs> act of heroism uh, in the eyes of the local towns and of Greyhawk, I guess. And then that act of heroism opened up a position which he was given over anyone else in the group. And so, by chance, I appear to have allied myself with him. You don't seem very sure of that. Like, it wasn't even your choice to... Let me ask you something. I mean... Have it... you ever done anything in the last couple of years that is your choice? Yes. Yes, I have. Such as? 
looking for Ikram. Ah, uh, and we found him. Yep. And then she she points and looks around like, yes, we found him. I mean, you found him. I did. And now he's not here. Well, he's working (laughs) on the arrangements for the Opera House, and I'm sure he has some other death wish quest to go on. I I know that I said some harsh words when I did find out about things about you. Yeah. I didn't mean them. Well, that's not true. I will not lie. I like my I like my perspective. Please don't make my tongue fall off if I lie. I meant them at the time. I know. Out of it, out of ignorance, but still, want to face one's mistakes head on and rectify. So I, I, I guess part of why I'm here is to apologize. You have no need to apologize, Sevda. But I do. For I wrong you. I spoke ill of you. I presuppose evil in your heart. I condemned and condemned your spirit to the gods. Well, that's a bit further than I thought you would have gone. Um, Well, I was angry. Justifiably so, but still a bit too much, I suspect. Well, um, um, I guess I accept your apology. And you can't go back home again, can you? Not for a while. Maybe not ever. They know. Things are. Things have changed back home, and not for the better. Tensions are high. There's rumors of war. of the faithful. The dervishes are being whispered that they're going to be brought back. There's even talk about the great board appearing once again. It's a punishment of the gods for our wayward ways. Of course. I have been pious. My family has been pious. But that's not enough to save the nation. I guess I do have to go back. They are my people after all. But I don't have to go back immediately. If that's your wish. Well, um... I wouldn't mind if you happen to stay for a while. I have to admit that I have learned much on my travels to here. These are strange lands, but there are um, some of these people are pious in their own way. They serve, yeah, some, some serve gods of justice and good. This chivalry they speak about here is commendable if extremely rare they do have their few and my contacts with the the elves such as they are have been enlightening there are rumors of them of course not very few of them in our labs they seem like an honorable people steep in tradition even if they tend to worship animalistic spirits and the like. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. They would probably say the same thing as we worship the Shahs of fire. and Most likely. 
Well, um... So, I mean, the people around here are not as harsh as the people back home. Not nearly as harsh. They seem to accept, well, a one-handed elf. Kobolds. Kobolds. Dragon Kobold. people. Kobolds? Yeah. Oh. Well, Kobold. I think it's to a lesser extent still, but they have hired a few. The, nice there was, um, actually, uh, Kix, I believe, is the one who set up some sort of agreement between them and dwarves for uh, the, the kobolds would help mine and be part of civilization, quote-unquote. That's interesting, I guess. They also accept giant lizards to talk and claim to be descendants of the dragons, and yeah. naked tortoises. That walk up right. Well, I I have never seen one of those before until uh, the last year or however long. Well, they haven't grabbed them and turned into soup, so I think that's a good sign. Yes, it is. They accept a lot of things. Maybe even me, but I probably won't know. Not unless you try. I mean, I have seen some, forgive me for saying this this way, but I have seen some of the like, even here. A few, to be sure. And yes, people look at people like you, which is a way, more polite way of saying it, um, with perhaps some disdain, but nothing like it was back home. Maybe. Maybe. But at least for now, I can't go back. Perhaps in the future, when I am more ready, we can... Stop. Stop lying. We both know you're never going to talk. We might have been young when we were betrothed. We were not strangers to each other. I know you. Well enough. And when you did it like that, I know they use a circling the proverbial drain, trying not to say what needs to be said. It is a very negative uh, trait of yours, and you should grow up out of, out of it. Well, it's not like I don't want to go back. That's... That's but not I what I, I meant. I meant that you I, know, I know that you're no... If you, if you know the truth, that you're not going to go back, just say it. You're not doing me any favors by lying. Or anyone else, especially yourself. You made a commitment here. You're loyal to your Baron and to your friends. Yeah. It's clear enough. I did hear some rumors about you being in some jungle somewhere as well. Is that true? Well, yes, and it was, well, it's where we found Ikram, ah, actually, of course. and um, I'd, I'd rather not go back there, actually, ever. But you, but you survived. Barely, yeah. Barely is better than nothing. No, I... Oh, for God's sake. I want to go home. Honestly. Yeah, I do. Okay. Then you'll go home when you're ready. 
Yeah. Or you won't go home at all. Simple as that. But stop dithering around. And like your mother would say, stop slouching. And she gets she gets up and leaves and she, wherever you guys are staying and gets in the sleeping sleeping giant in, right? Um and before she leaves, she takes the last of the tea, slams it, puts it back the the cup back down, and just walks away. Yep. Bird. Uh so Marcus, um, back to you. The the you and now you and Leo. Uh where are you heading now? You heading for the sleeping giant? Or are you going to do something else? You're muted, by the way, Marcus. I mean, I would assume we're done, so I would head to the Sleeping Giant to meet up with everybody else. Uh, yeah, Sleeping Giant. And uh, I would uh, I, w- I would do my usual shtick, and I can eat- get away with it for one night here, mm-hmm. at least, because I can just be like, yeah, nerves. I'm not going to be able to get to sleep anyways. Um, so uh, I go... I sit down downstairs at the Sleeping Giant, half half cocked, watching the door while I'm reading my book. I mean, you know, you know, Grog who is the the, the ogre behind the bar. Yeah, uh, you know, you know him by reputation. He probably doesn't remember you among the thousands of people that come. Oh, God, no, course, right? Well, you kind of stand out because you know you're a straight prayer. and the Sleeping Giant is. A middle of the road in, well appointed, but not fairly exceedingly expensive. Or it's a good, comfortable place to to live. Very, very home, uh, and relatively safe because nobody's stupid enough to try to, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, mess with a half orc, a half uh, actually a, a, an ogre. Yeah, a, a relatively small ogre, but still an ogre nonetheless. Yeah, uh, Leo, when you're walking, you both of you walking in, and, and you've never been to this uh, sleeping giant. Uh, in before, so when you walk in, you realize that the it's it's a small foyer where there is a sort of a you know a place where you, you know you put your your coats, anything else, your weapons, throw them away. You need to stay them away. They charge you silver for that. You can keep them, but if you want to keep them safe, they will you know have a place for it. Uh, peace bonded, and behind the counter, you see a uh, sort of a skulk figure with a very large face, you know. Welcome to the end of the Sleeping Giant. What can I do for you? Do you have any tea? Yes, uh, we serve tea. I'd like some, with, please. With or without milk? Oh, uh, without, please. All right, then, just ask for it. It's going to be a copper for you. I would uh, like to have some as well, if possible. Oh, very well. We have them as well. Now, I would remind you, no fights in my establishment. I will personally kick you out. And I hate doing it. Enjoy Not the, the night. Problem. Of course. I'll be, uh, I'll be down here for the night. I have a big day ahead of me and I will not be able to fall asleep. Uh, whatever. Just make sure you stay out of people's way. Of course. In the, mor- in the morning they clean up, so if they tell you to move. If they tell me to move, I will let them do their job. Right then. Um, Lael, just before you, uh, before tea and you are off to trance. Sorry. Do you know anything about the woman who is following Barakat? Anything tradition-wise? I was trying to at least be relatively friendly with her, and I was getting nowhere. Well, she is, uh, descended to a demigod. Hmm. Heavy stuff. That's one way of putting it. Really, honestly, you're probably better off asking uh, Barakat uh, himself, but... Oh, he won't tell us shit. He doesn't trust any of us. No, he does. He just doesn't trust himself. Oh, that, that fits, too. I think I have an idea for a peace offer. With Barakat? No, not Barakat. The woman. I... Okay. Uh... The other night when I got that new page in my lovely book as gifted from a deep uh, Sashella, uh, the uh, page of protection, I figured I would grant the uh, grant the opportunity for her to sign her name if she wished in case she does have to travel back. 
or if she were to get into any trouble, uh, it could it could greatly assist. Because it does not expire once it once it is on there. It only leaves if if I choose to erase it. I mean, do you think she'll accept that? Even if she doesn't, it has. It's clearly a good peace offering. Because as you have seen, to ninety five percent of the world, it's stuff to put on some sort of front as what that was. The only, will, the only thing the, I would actually recommend is perhaps consider that it is coming from a different land, a different culture. Of course. Yes. They may not accept it because it may go against beliefs. So I would actually I would be very careful how you would uh, approach such a thing, basically. 100%. I appreciate this counsel. Oh, also, just so you do not need to worry, I will also inform the Baron and anyone else of our group more the ruse that I'm playing of personality once, once the impact has been made. I wasn't really worried about anything, to be honest with you. Perfect. Uh, yeah, but then be beyond that point, I'd be very quiet. Just uh, just thinking and planning ahead. Um, however, if I was downstairs when uh, when our traveling companion got back, uh, that is where I would I would actually try and try and just flag her down and actually have that conversation. I assume, like, uh, she does come back eventually? Yeah, she does. I hate a barricade. She comes alone. Yeah. Uh, and she's kind of startled back to the fact that there's an ogre behind the counter. And the ogre just says, once you see an ogre, you see no. Right ahead. And she's like, right. Of course. And she goes in. Um, actually, if if I briefly may, before you leave, do you have one second? I. This yes. is. All right. No, I know this. I've been taking the wrong approach the entire time. I would actually like to apologize. Um. Apologize. Now, as part of this, um, I do not know if this goes against any beliefs, but I have been gifted uh, certain aspects and abilities from Deep Sashela. And one of these is a protection from, uh, from moving on past the mortal coil. All that it requires is a name on a page in my lovely, in, in my tome. Um, I would like to extend that opportunity to you, whether you wish to accept or not. Let's say I did, and let's say that I won't. Good evening. Good evening. And, she and he, he leaves it there, says nothing else. Is, uh, is Barricad in the bar? Uh, Barricade, did you leave behind her, or did you left her leave to walk to one of the streets alone about at night? What did you do? Probably left a while after, like 30, uh, yeah. 60 minutes. Yeah. It'll take a while for you to catch up. Yeah. Uh, back with Gar. The last 20 minutes that we have left. Um, you're still in the golden wheel. Um... You, do you move up to another table, a more expensive table? No, no, like you... I said, I was just going to stay at this one table to reconfirm everything that the last guy said with anybody else who would might. Yeah, you know that I mean. guy was particularly chatty because he was so drunk, right? In fact, other people sort of look at them. You know, these, these are low-level gamblers. I mean, this is the equivalent of time machines up front of the casino, right? 
Look just the to get old blue blown. hairs that play those yeah, dime yeah. slots know a lot more than the letting on. They've, they've been sitting there for 27 hours straight. They've seen everything that's gone on in that casino. You know. Yeah, but uh, it, if this is a sort of a height, then uh, they would have known about that. You what? might get a confirmation about the story, but... Uh, that's fine. What time of day is it? Uh, it's close to midnight. Close to midnight? Didn't yeah. I enter here like midday? Yeah, you've been gambling for a while. Ah, damn it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll cash out. I want to actually try and contact somebody before I... Okay. ...investigate another casino or return... Well, probably I'd, I'd return back to where everybody else is mm -hmm. uh, before that, but I want to try and contact somebody. Okay. Uh, Paleon Shadow Whisper. Okay. Or his you... brother, his half-brother. Mm-hmm. Well, I know uh, where they. I know where they tend to stay when they are in the city. But if they're not there, then I'm gonna have to send a message. Yeah, you're gonna probably gonna have to send a message. And remember, he he basically lives outside of the city. Right. At which point, I have to wonder then it not be faster for me to just jump on my riding horse and go out there myself. You know my problem is, that? is that I'm very broke and <laughs> <laughs> and literally. The one uh, one gold I have is what I'm getting in these casinos and bet gambling with. So, the alternative is going to kicks and asking for money, and that's not going to likely happen. Uh, you know that Marcus is there, and and he, and he had some. We've I barely I ever have... talked, Marcus. I also <laughs> have money. God, that would be so weird asking Lale for money. I would <laughs> say it comes full circle, sir. I know, but it's like, I think Gar considers Leia like the homeless bum of the group. Like, I think everybody considers him. I think Leia considers Leia the homeless bum. <laughs> yeah, the so it's like not the first <laughs> thought, not the first thought, and like, hey, I wonder if he's got some money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm Eventually... not, I'm not looking for these two guys to borrow money from. So that's not why I'm looking for them either. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Just to showing everybody a reminder of who they are. Right. So, yeah, I guess I would return back to the... Is it a tavern or an inn? It would have to be an inn, right? It just has yeah. a tavern in it. A right. giant sleeping... A giant um, sleeping giant. Right. Yeah. Right, so I guess I would go there, then Marcus would be in the lobby? I mean, tavern? Oh, well, yeah. I'm yeah. like, like I'm, I'm, I'm downstairs reading. When you walk in, I just do a... Hey, I'm leaving town for a day and a half. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I will let everyone know. All right, cheers. And then I walk out. Cheers. Hop on my horse and ride off to Wait. the Paleon house. Wait, uh... Jesus. I forgot what your name is. It's only three letters long, but God, what's your name? Wait, Gar, one second. Well, that was a second. I am out of here. And I run up to you with super speed, because I can do that. Oh, the Flash. I don't know who this yeah, guy is. Yeah, he runs faster than your horse now. <laughs> he is the Flash. And I, uh... And I just say, uh, do you need any help with anything? <laughs> you guys, you guys don't know, man. This is the element of my actual person that bleeds into Gar, is I will never probably yeah. ever ask for help. I know, I know. No, I think I have this handled. I believe you were helping somebody else today. Why don't you just keep doing that? Well, it's I'm more so kind of trying to find a purpose today and tomorrow. I hope you find yours then. If you do need if you need any help, please do not hesitate to ask. I certainly will. God, this is I, the worst situation ever. I feel like the only way to get I could get out of this scenario would be to cast fly on me and my horse at the same time. <laughs> Which I could. The yeah, but the horse would probably throw you. Wouldn't wouldn't do anything since you're flying both. Alright, you're you're leaving in the dead of night, right? I would have to cast resilient sphere around me and the horse, so the horse would throw me, but I wouldn't be able to Yeah, it's after a little after midnight apparently. Um uh, I can only do it on my 
Never mind. I can only do it on myself. Uh, I was going to give you um, a spell, but I can't do it. Never mind. All right. I uh, talk to you later. Be safe. So awkward. <laughs> Eventually, you'll crack. Well, if that's true, then I'll die. Total stone One... crack. <laughs> But yeah, no, I I think we said before that they're like uh, a half day's ride out from Greyhawk. You go to where did he say that you go? I have this right here. Uh, Diamond Lake. Yep. Uh, alien Shadow Whisperer lives with his wife and occasionally with his half brother. <laughs> it's in town, but. Uh, so yeah. Wait, um, did you just say he's in town? In Diamond Lake. Yeah. No, no I'm not going to do the same thing that happened. Like yeah, the same thing that happened last time. Where <laughs> I look for them in town, and I get yeah, to his house a half day away. Oh, he's in town. Yeah. Uh, so it's early in the morning when you get there. And, you know, you rode all night and your horses. Well, I mean, technically tired. it would be midday. Oh, midday. Uh, actually, if it's midday, could you roll a uh, save exhausting with your constitution save? Me or the horse? Both of you. Well, I don't know. You want to roll for the horse? Because I don't know what the horse ho rolls. Does the horse rolls? Let's see. Horse. Plus two, I think. It's a. Riding horse, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's con a riding plus, horse. Con, plus, con plus one. Technically, I rolled a 13. Yeah, you're tired, but not... Oh, that horse. Oh, Oof. well, I do like that you rolled it, and then I rolled it. Do that knowing you were rolling it? We got basically the same thing. Yeah, that horse is very, very tired. You, you, if, if you keep riding that horse throughout the night into the morning... Yeah, that horse. It'll be is not the gonna... end of uh, True yeah. Grit. Basically, and yeah, that horse is out, not going to make it. Four hundred pounds on a horse does make it tired. Wow. Well, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, it's still within what a horse can carry. It's more than you've been riding all night. No, no, I know. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying the four hundred pounds thing. Yeah. It's uh, still within its four hundred pounds over an extended time period. What a surprise. A half a day. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's more that we wrote it here and then it didn't get a chance to rest and that because I just wrote it another Man, you didn't give it a chance to rest? You monster. I am a monster. That's how I introduced myself at the beginning of the session. No, you're a turtle. Portal. I said I'm the bad guy of the group. Well. Hey, look, anyway. you got a woman chasing you down who loves you. What the hell like, are you doing? <laughs> I'd sacrifice the world to get mine back. And you're here <laughs> sending her off. Talk to Marcus. So yeah, your horse is very, very tired. Uh, you'll have to rest. Fine. Uh, well, I mean... Basically, uh, well, or basically I can, you're... Or I can push two more levels of exhaustion and risk it. For that biscuit. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just waiting for you, the horse, to die so you can resurrect it as like it's a zombie horse. True. Well, unfortunately, the spells I have, I would cast my spell on the horse and it would come back as a humanoid. So, five E doesn't have the whole hey, cast it on a minotaur skeleton to get a minotaur skeleton. Cast it on a minotaur skeleton, I get a humanoid skeleton. All right. Seems legit. So I would piggyback the, the skeletal. There ain't horse, many skeleton horse head. options. I would have a horse head humanoid that would just be piggybacking my way back. <laughs> At least you now know what spell to develop. Yeah, uh, yeah that's your point. Right. No, that's not how the tower works. Also, that's we went alternative tower rules. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Because the, the thing on the front is basically, hey, add a word to the spell, and that word will do something different. And it's like, none of that has anything to do with anything I want to do with spells. 
Like, hey, this spell will add plus D6 damage to what my animate dead? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Thank you. What I'll if pass. each skeleton did an extra 1D6? Because they're on fire. It's flaming, create undead. Yeah, but skeletons are also not immune to flames. Oh, no, they all burned down. Oh, what a shame. I mean, that's why there are burning skeletons out there. No, no, I have the thing that, um, uh, whatever, it's the one that lets me do uh, better necrotic spells, and then I can push a necrotic spell for a higher level at the risk of exhaustion, since exhaustion yeah. will also, you know, kill you. Oh. Ah. But yeah, no, uh, half a day, I reach these guys, but then the rest of the group has half a day to catch up to me time-wise, so. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in in the morning, uh, uh, else, you know, yeah, bright. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. uh, before that, uh, during that half a day, uh... he's looking for something. No, it's not answering any question here. Um, kicks. Uh, you yeah. said you were going to try to contact some people in the city. Yeah, and since uh, Darius has already been dealt with, probably if we wanted to, like, uh, since we only got four minutes left, if we wanted to go for time, it would be I'm canvassing nobles to see who's amenable to the idea and would spend next session seeking people out and probably already put in a letter to the Castilian to speak with him, of which I would then speak with him the next day. Uh, uh, the Castilian. Well, first of all, you have the letters that you have to deliver. And yeah. Them... Oh, yeah. That too. I meant to mention that. I'm just <laughs> it's been a bit. <laughs> yeah, that actually would get you in the door with the Castilian. Uh, mm -hmm. Although they're not. I mean, you don't know what the letters are unless you open them, but they do have an official seal. Yeah, uh, I'm not breaking seals. Uh, so uh, aside from that, you know. Oh, uh, I would probably so... pro take the letters, pro hold them up to the candlelight. It's like I can. I think I can read what's inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you dealt with the letter like this before. In fact, the last time you came here, one of the things that that he also said with you, there are probably some some reports. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you you remember that you're working with him. He does send regular reports to Greyhawk as he is wont to do from his position. Yeah. So, uh, you don't know what those reports are, by the way. But you know, mm -hmm. it is reports of the situation. Um, so you you probably wouldn't be surprised at the contents, right? Uh, at least you don't think so. So, you know, it's it's more of it gets you, in the, you know, at the uh, the mayor's palace, basically. Right, uh, of course. And uh, in fact, we're going to leave it there. You're. you're yeah, we'll let that first tonight. next time. <laughs> well, and the next are. day, were you were you planning to like head to do the Castilian stuff the very next day, morning? Yeah, that seems like the case. Because if that's because. Marcus was also going to be like, in the morning, be like, well, Baron, it, I, it, I believe we have similar people to talk to. Well, come along then. I could use someone to actually talk to. I spent all yesterday just by myself wandering the city. I didn't even get a carriage. It took me hours. That is awful. But uh, today should be more entertaining. <laughs> I should hope so. Maybe Did at least productive. Do you need anybody else to come with you? Uh, it depends on how much you want to sit around and be bored. I'm I mean, going to say no at, on my end. I think it would be better if you didn't. I think Agar's not interested. I wonder where he went off to. Oh, oh he, he said he was going to be gone for a couple of days. Ah, well, such as it is. We'll be here at least a week. I mean, it took us two weeks to get here. Actually, let me, uh, how about this? You all go. I will check in on Barricat. Very well. Make sure that he's doing well. Uh, yeah. And I suppose make sure his uh, <clears throat> girlfriend uh, is doing well, too. Hasn't been, like, lost in the city or anything. I think she's perfectly capable, honestly. I believe the uh, proper term's fiancé. Um, not from what I've been hearing. <laughs> Maybe we heard different words. <laughs> they're they're said to be betrothed, fiance. Still, maybe as impolite as she is, I still wouldn't want any harm to her. 
If you see her, at least make sure she's fine. Anyway, uh, we are a couple of minutes out, so let's do the outros, mm-hmm. shall we? Let's cool. start with Kaleo. Uh, my name, well, my name's Rob. Um, I'm playing uh, Lael, the uh, the monk, who is apparently just the Flash now, <laughs> and um, he's trying new tactics, at least in terms of being more uh, proactive in getting something he wants. In this case, uh, hopefully it works out. We'll see. Uh, so far, he's been rebuffed, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Pandoran. Yeah. Pandoran, the tiefling eloquence bard, may or may not have had the worst day of his life in this session. <laughs> but, but he right. also had one of the best endings in the session. Don't worry. They'll get worse. True. It is supposedly getting better. Like I said, it was, I, I, I'm helping you by bringing her along. It was good you had that conversation. Also, I believe by now he has an investment to pick up, since it took us a while to get here. That he can also finally show off to the rest of the group sometime next session. I mean, you got Woo. loved ones that are alive, so clearly it can get worse. <laughs> okay, guy. Murdered family, fucking yeah! Come on, bring it on! Bring it on! on. I mean, my my family's murdered too. To be fair, yeah, I got one without a tragic backstory. I got to see your murder family when I saved you in your dreams. I don't know if you could exactly call mine tragic. Yeah, she seems to be very accepting of your choices, and even will hear you out as you mull through it. Whereas mine is just a... Oh, yeah, I have a reasonable <laughs> hot head, and you have a dead one, so... Yeah. Yeah. As I said, yeah. it can get worse. A little bit of difference there. It can get worse. <laughs> so who's next? Uh, that would be uh, Marcus. All right, uh, my name is Justin. I play Marcus, who's going to, uh, succ- who's going to attempt his own form of necromancy next session as he goes to speak with someone directly connected to the mayor. Uh, aside from that, you can find me at One Bad Roll, where we currently have one game, soon to be rolling out uh, a couple more. Next one is set uh, for the first week of October. Vampire, baby. It should be a good time. Yeah. So if we have kicks. Hey, everybody, I play Baron Kicks the Shield, whose parents are still alive and well on a farm somewhere. Just being happy. Imagine that. Also, Boo, a live today. <laughs> <laughs> Invest in war bonds, everybody. Hey, man, uh, my and parents are alive, too. And, of course, come here Sundays and Wednesdays at uh, 10, 2, and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and come see a game, and come see us Friday, where we're going to have another podcast. And last but certainly not least, we have Gar. Yep, Gar, total necromancer. He has no idea who his parents even were. Really? Yeah. Luxury. I mean, I don't know. They're probably dead. Tortles actually only live as long as humans, really. So, but uh, yeah, no clue. I was raised by somebody else, not my parents. Uh, there's nothing I like more than a good mystery, which explains why I'm always on fucking one. True. Self improvement. That's the goal of a life. Uh, <laughs> the betterment of oneself. You guys don't know. I'm starting from zero, and I'm working up. Uh, I sold my soul for knowledge. Now you guys know why and what happened. Yeah. I hope to do great deeds to win it back. Maybe not my soul, but theirs. And unlocking uh, an ancient mystery is worth the price of a civilization. I will burn this fucking world to the ground to bring <laughs> them back. <laughs> It'll be like the uh, end of Avengers. Was it worth it, Thanos? Oh, I thought you were going to go with the what if, no spoilers. But I think if you've seen the what ifs, you know which one I'm talking about. I have not, so I cannot comment. And yep. Lessons. And of course, I'm Lesson, who is a GM for this session. I am a streamer, just streams hopefully <laughs> every day, Monday through Friday, uh, Lesson Learn 1. And also, I am over a YouTube channel, Lessons Learned, where I am working on a new project, which the trailer is out. 
Uh, and before we go, finally give you that trailer. Oh, man. Put it on the chat so everybody can see it. Nice. Yes, Woo! the Roll20 chat. Not the Roll20 chat, but the, <laughs> the Twitch chat. Yes. So yeah, that put it into the doobly doo. Appears there we go. Yeah. yeah. So please check it out. Uh, give a like and subscribe, and uh, hopefully you'll have some... uh, first episode should be out. So thank you everybody for coming, and uh, we'll see you when we see you. See, see you later. Time. All right.